Hello everyone and welcome back to another Space Engineers mod overview. This is the Star Trek Ultimate Weapons mod. Now despite it being called the Ultimate Weapons mod, it also has a few other blocks in it that I'd uh, like to show you. So to begin, I'm going to go over the weapons, starting with all the energy weapons. So this is the laser turret. This is easily the biggest turret in the whole mod. As you can see, the rest are either one by one by one or just a little bit bigger. And it's actually one of the turrets that does the least damage. I guess that's because this is supposed to be kind of a more primitive technology, uh, lasers. So it does less damage, but I guess the ammo is easier to build and it uses less power. Moving on to the dual phaser turret. As you can probably tell by the appearance, this weapon shoots out two banks of phasers at once. It actually doesn't do the most damage out of every weapon on this mod, but it is up there. Next is the Pulse Phaser. Now if you've seen Star Trek Deep Space Nine and you know what the Defiant is, um, this weapon is basically what that shoots, uh, the kind of pulse weapons at the front, the phasers. Um, but for some reason this really doesn't do much damage at all. I think based on the Defiance power this would do a lot more damage but it actually doesn't. But it does sound the same and the beam that comes out does look like the one from the Defiant. Now moving on uh, to these six different weapons. So there are two main types here. There are the Federation versions and the Cardassian versions. Performance wise these are all the same. So starting from the right uh, we have the Tier 1 Phaser. In the middle we have the Tier 2 Phaser and on the left we have the tier 3 phaser. Compared to the tier 3 phaser, the tier 1 phaser does barely any damage at all, and the tier 2 phaser is kind of in the middle, but it does do quite a bit of damage, and the tier 3 phaser does just so much damage it is ridiculous. It is the turret with the second highest power in this mod. Now the only difference between the Cardassian versions and the Federation variants is the colour. Now the Federation variants, like in the actual show, shoot uh, orange or red phasers, and the Cardassian versions shoot yellow phasers. As they get more advanced, there is actually a colour difference in the weapons. So the Tier 1 shoots with more of a red kind of beam. Uh, the Tier 3 shoots with a very uh, orangey beam, and the Tier 2 is just kind of in the middle of the two. I don't think there's much difference in the Cardassian weapons. Moving on to the other alien weapons, so on the right here, this is the Klingon Disruptor turret. This actually doesn't do much damage compared to the Federation weapons, uh, specifically the Tier 2 and the Tier 3 weapons, um, but it is kind of comparable to the Tier 1 phaser. And this design does look cool, it's actually the same as the Pulse phaser, and uh, all these other weapons are the same as well. I will do a firing demo of all of these weapons uh, when I finish this part of the video. Moving on to the Romulan phaser turret. Now this is similar to the Klingon Disruptor turret, it shoots more like a pulse weapon, and it does sound different as well, it's actually really loud, but again, it doesn't actually do that much damage. Now a weapon that does do a lot of damage is the Borg Cutting Beam. Now despite being the same 3D model as the others, this actually puts out a hell of a lot more power, and it's just one big continuous beam, which exceeds the power of any of the Federation weapons, like the, uh, the Tier 3 Phaser, and it is just really powerful. Moving on to the Dominion Polaron Beam. So this shoots out a purple beam and it's based on the Jem'Hadar fighters from Deep Space Nine. It does kind of a medium amount of damage, it's about as good as the tier 2 phaser, which is still nowhere near as powerful as the Borg cutting beam for example, but it is a bit better than the Klingon and Romulan weapons. And unlike in the show, it doesn't just take down shield or go through them instantly, it's just a purple version of uh, the laser. Now moving on to the torpedo launcher. Now one thing I'll say about this is that the accuracy is not the greatest. I find that if I shoot something over 300 meters away, the chances are it will miss. So I'd suggest using this as more of a close range weapon. I suppose it's done deliberately, so you have to use the other weapons a bit more because the torpedoes do quite a bit of damage. Now I'm going to move on to the fixed weapons in this mod. This is the fixed version of the laser turret over there, the massive one. Yes, this is a lot smaller, uh, which I was surprised about, but this 3D model looks really cool. These are all original and you can tell that a lot of time has been put into making these. So the weapon in the middle here is actually a fixed phaser. So this will shoot like the other weapons over there, uh, and it's just a fixed version basically. I think it does about the same amount of damage as the tier 3 phaser, or between the tier 2 and the tier 3 phaser. It's pretty cool and it's good if you want uh, more precision and you don't want to just rely on the turrets completely. And finally, for the large weapons, we have this. 
This is the fixed version of the torpedo launcher, which is actually uh, the most accurate torpedo launcher because they're not normally turrets in the show anyway. Now this uh, top area here looks like it should be a camera, but it actually isn't. Uh, this isn't functional, um, so you'll still need a camera above it. But as you can see in here, you can actually see a torpedo loaded. It has this reflective panel here with the uh, the terminal that you'd see uh, in Star Trek. So you've got the photon torpedo and uh, basically describing it. And the same terminal on the other side. So that is the large grid weapons. Now I'm gonna be moving on to the small grid weapons. So starting from the right, we have a smaller version of the fixed phaser turret, which is that one over there. It does significantly less damage than the large version, uh, which is to be expected, but it is still quite good and uh, it's really effective against small ships. You would definitely need a shield mod to protect yourself from these weapons. The second weapon here is a smaller version of the fixed uh, laser turret. So this will just shoot out the laser uh, like the large version, but it's just less powerful, it's just downscaled a bit. The third weapon here is a much smaller version of the fixed phaser turret, but I actually think it's equal or actually above the tier 1 phaser in the large grid scale. That tier 1 phaser just does not do a lot of damage. I believe these are Tholian weapons. These shoot out blue projectiles, so this is the fixed version and this is the turret version. The designs are quite a bit different to the other weapons. Those are the small grid weapons in this mod. Oh, it appears I made a mistake. This is not the laser turret. This is a torpedo turret, but it just uses the same sculpt as the laser turret. We're going to fire all the large grid weapons. This is going to be quite loud. To prevent lag, I've just removed that. And we're going to move on to the other blocks in this mod. So these are the nacelle blocks, and to be honest, at first glance, I thought these were thrusters, but they're actually not, they're batteries. They can store 25 megawatt hours, but can output 1.2 gigawatts. So you could kind of have these in a warp core, and they could all be stacked up, and it looks like the warp core from uh, any of the Star Trek shows. There are a few other blocks in this mod as well that are worth mentioning. There is a version of the gyroscope, both small and large grid, that is just a normal gyroscope but with 10 times the power. There are also light and heavy polarized hull blocks, so they are just blocks that have much higher health. And there is also a large and small version of the polarized hull plating as you would see in a Star Trek Enterprise. So you can basically fit these over the existing hull on your ship. They're a bit like uh, catwalk blocks, but they're very heavy so you would need improved thrusters and gyroscopes. Now the last thing in this mod that I want to talk about is the cloaking devices. Yes, these are working cloaking devices, although they don't seem to work for other players. So if you're in a multiplayer server and you use it, uh, apparently the other player can still see you. Um, I'm not sure if that was just an isolated thing uh, in my case or if it's just in general, but that's worth mentioning. These are available in the small grid scale over here and the large grid scale. And there has actually been a ship here this whole time. Let me know if you can see it. As you will see, it decloaks. But this has actually been sitting here the whole time and it's been using one of the cloaking devices. The only issue I have with the cloaking devices, other than the fact that other players might be able to see it, which kind of ruins the idea, is uh, that the shadow uh, for the ship will still exist. So if it's on the ground and you put the cloaking device on, if the sun is shining, you'll still see the shadow, which is a bit of an issue. Um, but it's not the end of the world, it's still very difficult to see, and in space, you wouldn't see it at all. As a Star Trek fan, this mod is fantastic, and I'd recommend Star Trek fans, and even people that aren't Star Trek fans, to have a go with this mod, because there are some really good weapons in it, and they're fairly well balanced. I also think that the cloaking devices and the battery or nacelle blocks are really good. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please do leave a like as it really does mean a lot to me. As this video is being filmed a week or two prior to its upload, this may be a bit outdated, but I want to thank the 54 people that are currently subscribed to this channel. Every time someone subscribes, it is always a surprise to me uh, and it is the same kind of surprise every time uh, because I just wouldn't expect people to actually subscribe to this, but they do. Um, so thank you to those 54 people, I really do appreciate it. So thanks for watching this video, if you have any video ideas or any mods you'd like me to review, please do let me know. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.